and again, welcome to Bit Depth. I'm Santiago Ramones. Perpendicular to me is John Barrett. How's it going? Pretty good. <laughs> uh, how do we know each other, John? Um, well, we met, I think, in middle school. Yeah. But we didn't really like know each other. Right. <laughs> um, and then in high school, it was all the band stuff. Mm-hmm. And then that's pretty much how we ended up spending a large amount of time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> around each other yeah uh um, yeah you're one of my bestest friends i have many a best friends uh but you're one of my bestest friends uh <laughs> yeah um uh, middle school through like band both play trombone um do you still play trombone because i don't uh, <laughs> i don't remember the last time I, <laughs> I got roped into playing for a musical thing like two years ago or more <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last that's right. the last one <laughs> right. yeah um yeah no I think maybe like marching band in college not even marching band because I played baritone then anyways uh <laughs> um yeah, and through high school marching band, we were uh, spending too much time together. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we got to the point to where we were saying what the other thought before the other said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and then getting mad because the other one said it first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and then, happily, we have uh, gotten back in touch through... Uh, it's like a few years of not talking that much because of college being busy for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm glad. I'm really happy to see you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what do you do or what do you want to do or however that question is framed? <laughs> um, well, that could encompass a lot of different things. Um, usually I think when people ask that question, they mean vocationally. Right. Um, as a job at the moment, I'm working at a, uh, machine shop. Um, we, uh, rebuild and make parts for oil field equipment. Um, I kind of do inventory and deliveries, mm-hmm. um, is what I do there. Um, and then just kind of in general I do all sorts of things but <laughs> that's what I do for my job <laughs> yeah but then what do you like really do <laughs> well um I guess um I've kind of grown up uh with a heart for ministry um and for sharing God with people um and It's taken me, I think, kind of a while to figure out um, that there's all, I I mean, of course it sounds common sense, but that there's all sorts of ways to do that and that's not just a job description. Right. Which is also kind of the cultural understanding of what do you do Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, yeah, so um, I try my best to do that um, wherever I'm at and then of course not as well at sometimes but whether it's at my job or with friends or Mm -hmm. things like that yes that's that's what i try to do Mm. anyway (laughs) (laughs) um what when did you first sort of go like this is what i want to be uh, surprisingly, when I was really young, <laughs> um, I remember, uh, I grew up in a Christian home and my parents were Christian and I kind of was, was taught that I guess that, um, I mean, of course you get like just from Christian parents, you get kind of like the basics at a fairly <laughs> early age. And I, th- I just kind of thought, well, if God is the most important thing, then what else would I do that, <laughs> right. you know? And so that's kind of, kind of how that unfolded mm-hmm. at an early age. Um, and then throughout the years, that's kind of 
taken some different forms and um, added some. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Not complexity, but uh, <laughs> insight, I guess, to, right, right. to what that means. Yeah. Um, what was sort of your first experience, uh, sort of ministering, witnessing, whatever word you want to use, uh, for, for someone else? Hmm. I don't, I don't know if I know the first one. It's the one you remember, at least. <laughs> I, I remember a lot. Um, in middle school, probably middle school, because there's a certain age where you, do, I think, kids developed the ability to understand kind of like metaphysical mm -hmm. realities around that time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, realizing, of course, that, that the world is bigger than the little elementary school <laughs> sorts of issues that we had, you know, right, but, right. Um, or that I had anyway. Um, but I had a lot of friends that struggled with um, a, a number of issues um, and looking back, I realized that I just got to walk with them through that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, those were kind of my first experiences and I can think of some individual peoples and stories and um, things like that where I just kind of got to be beside people as they walked through difficult Mm -hmm. situations and yeah. things in their life what's a it's a memorable story and you don't have to name names obviously but oh um, <laughs> i try to be careful of course because um, confidentiality is right, right really really important um a lot of uh a lot of friends over the years of uh just had issues with um, self-deprecation in a number of different forms, mm -hmm. um, whether that's cutting or um, suicidal tendencies or things mm -hmm. like that. I've kind of got to be there um, with some of my friends and and just get to to be with them through that. Um, and I guess, in a way, just do my best to try to show them. Mm -hmm. that they're valuable and that they have dignity um, yeah apart from what culture um, may want them to think of themselves right or, right or what um, standards that they feel that they haven't met or um, even some other situations where so my friends have just been under um, hardships from the situations around them you know not even self-deprecation but mm -hmm. Um, have just found themselves in a hard place struggling with difficult things that mm -hmm. middle schoolers or high schoolers shouldn't <laughs> have to deal with. Right, right. Um, so I guess that's kind of where it all started. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I mean, do you feel like it helped? <laughs> yeah, do I feel like it helped what? Do you feel like you helped uh, being with them and... Uh... I guess like trying to be a light in their life or whatever. Um, I suppose I try not to focus on myself too much, but hopefully just try to do what's best for them, mm -hmm. you know? And I've had, I've had friends that, uh, you know, I've tried to help them out of difficult situations where it's, whether it's suicidal things or, things like that, where they've hated me for it for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but they were alive. Yeah. And some of them thanked me later. Yeah. You know, and some of them didn't. And that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend like I've helped every person through every difficult sure, sure. thing. You know, I've got, I've gotten into a lot of situations with people and, and tried to do what I thought was helpful in ended up it not being helpful right you know um and um i guess kind of the more you do it the more you 
understand what those things are. Sure. Even though you never get perfect at it. Yeah. But. And then, like, getting older and going through, like, high school and then college is an entirely separate experience, but uh, <laughs> at least high school, um, how did that sort of take shape sort of at, at a time whenever, you know, we are pressured to decide on a vocation? Sure. Um, hmm. Yeah. It really, I really didn't like decide on a vocation <laughs> as like weird as that sounds right right um i kind of just thought oh yeah you know i'll go into ministry or whatever you know there was a time like ninth grade or whatever i thought i want to do something cool be like on the swat team or something, <laughs> which I, could be a completely big conflict of interest the more that you think about it but anyway <laughs> um but i don't yeah i don't know if i really had a moment um, I kind of thought over those four years about different ways I could do that. I thought about youth ministry. I mm -hmm. thought about preaching. Um, I mean, all of these sorts of different jobs that you can have. And, mm -hmm. and towards the end of high school, I ended up applying to a couple of different Christian colleges. And mm -hmm. I ended up going to Ozark without a really definite plan. Right. Um, so I had like a, a ministry school where I could get a ministry degree, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't go in with a set, like specific mindset of how I right, was going to do right. that. Um, how did that sort of become clear over time? Because <laughs> obviously you got it. <laughs> like yeah. you, you finished the thing. Uh, <laughs> uh how did that solidify over time? Um, when I started, I was interested um, in a, for a while in doing missions, mm -hmm. which a lot of people I think would probably look at me and be like, I don't know, like that would not be a good fit for you. <laughs> um, and over time that kind of changed. I got into some preaching classes and kind of discovered I enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm. and so. Um, I switched to a theology degree, mm. um, and kind of followed that for a while thinking I could graduate and start preaching or teaching at a different level. Right. right. Um, and the more I was there, the more I kind of real. I guess a, a turning point would have been, um, the summer before my junior year, um, where um, I was just building swimming pool. Well, a little history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I worked uh, growing up for my parents, mm -hmm. um, building swimming pools. Um, and so every, every time I would go home for the winter break or the summer break or most of the spring breaks and, and all that too, um, that's what I would do um, so I could afford college right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so that summer i kind of um i got i got to be uh, back in oklahoma building swimming pools um and got to have some conversations with people not in a church job mm -hmm. con context right uh, and it was, it was just kind of a cool experience and kind of a, a humbling one too, you know, like that kind of helped me realize that ministry is not dependent on where you work, which I mean, again, like it's one of those things that you know, but you don't realize until, exactly. until like <laughs> you're kind of forced to realize it, I guess. Yeah. But, um, and so I kind of continued, uh, at Ozark um, and graduated really um, content with doing or being wherever, I guess, as long as I could right. do that in that setting. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So currently I'm not at 
in a church ministry job position, but I'm content, mm-hmm. and you know, in in getting to work there and and uh, getting to know some of the guys that are there and and through all of that. So that's what I do, mm-hmm. where I do what I do, <laughs> <laughs> um, or I try to. Anyway. Yeah. Um, what were some of the bigger eye-opening experiences that you got from uh, Ozark? Uh, as far as career or... Um, theology was the thing that you oh, ended up with. <laughs> yeah. Um, my degree is just in Christian ministry. So okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to try to act like I have a fancy theology degree. It's, <laughs> it's really more general. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, oh gosh, some of the people there are just, uh, they're, they're so focused on God and um, he, he dominates their thoughts. And so um, getting to, uh, to learn from them and to get to be friends with, with a lot of them too yeah. has been has been really cool. Yeah. Um, probably one of the better things for my pride um, has been, um, and this is like multiple professors and people and, um, have been kind of hammering this home, is the the sovereignty and the vastness of God, mm. um, I guess. So like one of the, the big things that has, has uh, stuck out to me that when I learned from one of my professors is about how the, even like the, just the Jewish day is set up. Mm-hmm. The Jewish day begins at sundown. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, as the day begins, uh, creation and people are, are winding down and going to sleep. And mm-hmm. so the day literally begins with humans being helpless. Hmm. Um, the day begins with with God acting and moving in the world, and then when we wake up, we get to join in what He has already been doing while we were asleep. Nice. Um, and so that kind of has helped me develop an understanding of ministry that I just get to join in what He's doing. Right. Um, and it has freed me a lot as well. Um, uh, one of the other things, uh, it's still about the sovereignty of God, but um, has kind of helped me um, be content and mm-hmm. um, at peace with not being able to, you know, do everything. And, right, right. Um, has been understanding that that God will move and work um, either through what I do or in spite of it. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess that that takes some of the pressure off, but also in the same way frees me to do more of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in a, in a kind of a cool backwards way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that has done two things for me. Um, it's helped me understand how to do ministry apart from myself, because that's really the only way to do ministry. Um, yeah. and also, um, to not try to, take any well i mean of course it's constant effort to not take pride in it but Mm -hmm. um helps i guess puts me in my place you know yeah yeah of course a phrase that makes everybody cringe but (laughs) keeps me uh grounded right um i've always known you as one of the hardest working people i know if not the hardest working person i know um and so that, how does that understanding sort of shape the, the way that you work? Yeah. And I mean, it sounds like it sounds really backwards. Um, because I think one of my reactions, I, when I hear something different or new, my mm-hmm. first thought is always like pushback. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's then, everyone's first thought. Yeah, yeah, and I, I kind of have to chew on it a little bit before it like actually makes sense to me. Because like if I think when I hear that, I think, well, then what reason is there for like me to take any responsibility in this is at all? You know, mm-hmm. if he's going to do everything, then mm-hmm. why should I do anything? Yeah. Um, 
but like I said, it it uh, in so, some sort of a backwards way, it has freed me to do more without feeling the weight of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so since I understand that the weight of someone else's experience does not rely completely on my efforts mm-hmm. um, and my abilities, I don't stress about it as much, which allows me to do a better job right? and, mm-hmm. and, and work harder in a way. Um, for their benefit. For their benefit, mm-hmm. yeah. So it actually, um, from what I have noticed, has uh, helped me work harder, healthier. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it it's always interesting to to see the perspective, um, and knowing uh, the different people that I know that um, sort of take different approaches to their faith in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always interesting to see. Uh, what helps them be their best. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then what's a, what's a way that um, in your everyday life, you, uh, I guess, support that faith. (laughs) <laughs> um I yeah I, there's a dog over here yeah he's needing attention <laughs> um, I try to be as open about it as I can and also understand um, that not everyone is receptive to varying degrees of that right um, and that all comes down to, I, th- I feel like your, your relationship with the person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I try to, to share, um, relevant, uh, parts of my faith that at whatever point along I am in my relationship with this person, they will be receptive to, mm-hmm. because like, I, um, I can't share, certain things about the the church that people have been hurt by the church in that specific area. Right. You know, I, you, you can't lead in with that. (laughs) Um, And so that, that has to come. I mean, I think obviously in your, your relationship with that person, the, the, the better, you know, them, the more of that stuff you can kind of get into. Um, Right. And I realized I didn't really answer your question. (laughs) Um, I, it all, it really kind of comes down to conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, people give um, hints, clues, I think, um, just in everyday conversations about maybe it's either something they're needing help with mm-hmm. or um, a way in, in which they're looking for God or things like that. And um, I, I try... Uh, I don't want to say to play into those, but um, to speak um, from my experience and, and what I've learned mm-hmm. um, through studying that to them. And it, it kind of depends on that person and how receptive they are. Right, again. right. And so um, it may be something like a little comment. Uh, my, I think my favorite thing is questions, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> getting, getting people to think. Um, uh, thinking of, of one example, you know, and I, I'd love to, I've loved even to, to play, I don't want to necessarily <laughs> say devil's advocate, but that is um, the phrase at least. <laughs> yeah. With, with some of my, even like friends from Bible college, you know, like just, just asking them questions, trying to get them to, to think about things that, right. you know, I mean, may or may not be leading them towards one direction or another, mm-hmm. but um, to just, it, it kind of opens 
people's minds, I think. And, and mm -hmm. as you, as you develop that relationship with people, you, you understand what, um, objections are intellectual. You, right. you understand what objections are, um, emotional or, mm -hmm. um, kind of heart-based things. Um, and so, I mean, as you go along with that person, you can discern whether one thing may be helpful or another. Mm -hmm. It's just a comment or a question or sometimes a really long conversation. <laughs> uh, I am fond of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, talk a lot about uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and there's relationships with other people and uh, relationships with God. Uh, what sort of, what's the importance of relationships? That is a really good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> relationships with people, I would say, are important because um, we were created in relationship. I mean, it, God created man and he was lonely um, and it wasn't good. And so he created people in relationships mm -hmm. to be in relationships. Um, and when those break down, when they fail, um, not good things happen. Right. Um, whether that's marriages or um, all sorts of different relationships with people. Um, and throughout the Bible, God is in the business of restoring relationships with people to himself and also to each other. Mm -hmm. um, Real quick, forgive the, the gnawing sounds in the uh, background, but yeah, yeah got it. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Um, but we see countless encounters of, of God being very concerned with um, reconciling people to relationships with each other as we see multiple accounts of um, like in Revelation where we see worshipers in heaven, people of every nation, tribe, tongue, and language brought together mm -hmm. um, to be reconciled to one another. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that that transcends our um, uh, cultural identities and, and mm -hmm. ethnic identities. And, and it's something that um, God's design is to bring people together. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, God is really, really concerned with uh, knowing people as well. Um, mm -hmm. The Bible is not just a series of ways in which God has just commanded people how to live, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of a common misconception. Right. Um, and it's very easy to fall into, even being a like a faithful person. It's very easy to try to... Um, want to get your checklist right. all down. So follow the rules. Follow all the rules good. and you're good. <laughs> um, but uh, Jesus doesn't really seem to be ultimately concerned with that as an end goal. Um, mm -hmm. As he talks in throughout the book of John, we see um, that he says that eternal life is to know the Father. Um, mm -hmm. So whatever heaven is, it is literally knowing and being in a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, the name Emmanuel, which refers to Jesus, literally means God with us. Mm -hmm. God is, isn't just concerned about telling people how to live, but he wants to be with them and be in relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And then also them be in relationship with each other. Right. Um, in the beginning of the book of John, um, it says the word became flesh, referring to Jesus, mm -hmm. um, and made his dwelling among us. Mm -hmm. Um, because he wants to know us. Yeah. Um, the God of the Bible is a is a it's not it's not a deistic God um, that that just tells you how to live, but he's he's one that like that comes and lives among his people and wants them to know him. Mm -hmm. um, that verb made his dwelling is like a verb form of the word tent. Hmm. Um, yeah. So you could say God tented among us or. Actually, a better translation would be tabernacled, hmm. which the tabernacle in the Old Testament was the place where God dwelt among mm -hmm. his people mm -hmm. because he wanted to know them. Mm -hmm. because, because a relationship with God is, is more just 
than than making sure that you're doing enough to get into heaven. And that's one of the things that I think um, American Christianity has um, sometimes created a culture in which we idolize salvation mm-hmm. and we miss the rest. Right. We we're so focused on getting to heaven that God becomes an afterthought mm-hmm. or a means to get there. Mm-hmm. And then when we get to heaven, oh, God's there too. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> or the relationships that we don't work on with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, we we strive to get to heaven as a sort of escape where all hate and, and malice is gone. But if we don't work to reconcile those relationships here, how much do we really want heaven? You know, I think right. we, we sometimes um, paint ourselves a picture that's, that misses the point. Right. I guess. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, forgive the loaded question, but <laughs> what, what does it mean to know God? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, I would imagine... <laughs> Of course, I don't have a Greek New Testament in front of me, but in that particular chapter, um, I would imagine it's probably not a uncommon word for no. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know that it has any special or different, you know, mm-hmm. um, than just the regular gnosko in the Greek. But um, I guess one way you could put it um, is one of the Psalms says uh, that the wicked man or the ungodly man or however you, you want to render that makes no room in his thoughts for God. Mm. Um, and so if you, and I don't, I don't want to read too much into it, you know, but mm-hmm. if you reverse that, you'd say like the righteous man uh, thinks of God. Mm. Um, and I don't want to confuse knowing with thinking because <laughs> you, know, you can learn all these things about somebody, but if you don't know them, you, you still don't know them. You know, right, right. There's all sorts of people that know everything there is to know about their favorite movie star, but they don't know, know them, them personally. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really <laughs> great and difficult question that I'm not sure I can completely answer. Mm-hmm. Um, or know necessarily how to answer um but that hmm. (laughs) and don't worry like a a lot of a lot of the premise of this is that i ask very difficult questions that don't necessarily have answers yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) um yeah and that is a good one Um, (laughs) I'm sure I'll probably be thinking about it for a while and then I'll go read some things and then I'll come back to you with whatever <laughs> it is that I end up finding. Right. But, um, I mean, of course, to know someone is to be in relationship with them. Mm-hmm. It involves more than head knowledge. Mm-hmm. I will say that. Um, and I think that's pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, prayer, of course, is the means through which um people communicate with God and that can take of course a number of different forms mm-hmm. um but it, I would say that it has to do with the desire to know and be known by God um, because you have you have half-sided relationships with God where people want to know God but they don't want God to know about them right um, because as I think I don't want to quote him if I get it wrong, <laughs> but somebody said, um, to, uh, to be known and not loved is our greatest fear. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we try to create half relationships, you know, where we, uh, we we're comfortable with just God being who he is. And then we live however we want to live because, you know, either, um, uh, we think it's inconsequential or whatever, but, um, it, in, 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 like any other relationship, it involves two sides. It involves mm-hmm. being known by that person and, and 
knowing that person or desiring to interact with that person as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I will like plant a flag there, but uh, I kind of want to talk about the, the logistics of like, what does it mean to have a job in the church? Not like, because I, I feel like that's something that might be difficult to, to understand for some people. Mm -hmm. Um, and that like, I guess it's, it's hard to know that, but like, you know, we see these people who have that vocation and how do they make a living <laughs> is the curiosity that I have. Yeah. Um, and that I, th I think that kind of depends on a number of different things The first of all, of course, the type of church mm -hmm. and then also their position, um, within that church. Um, I have, volunteered at a number of different churches. I have interned um, at a church for a semester. Um, and so I've gotten to kind of, I don't know, see behind the <laughs> scenes, if you will, or um, right, right. Um, whatnot. But um, a lot of the, most of the people that I've interacted with um, are really good, really cool people um, that are, are, are just very giving of, of, uh, of their time, their resources, um, themselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of them adopt or foster kids. One of the, the, the churches, the, the church that I interned at actually, like at one point, I think almost half the youth group was foster kids. Mm -hmm. And, it, That's a, amazing. and a big part of that was because a large number of people in the church were fostering kids. Right. Um, and um, so a lot of um, some of the pastors that I've, I've gotten. What? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Um, Doggo. <laughs> that I've gotten to be around. Um, <laughs> he's not getting enough attention. Um, I totally forgot where I was going with that. Our very... Um, of course, giving people as well. Um, and uh, they spend, you, you know, I, I know we, there, there are jokes about, you know, well, they don't do anything anyway, you know, why, mm -hmm. but. Um, and that's yeah. exactly what I'm trying to dispel. <laughs> yeah, the, the reality is, is most pastors and most people in ministry, what is your problem? <laughs> people in ministry positions, um, their schedules are, are really pretty full mm -hmm. um, and they spend a lot of their time and a lot of times they, you know, they get phone calls in the middle of the night um, or they have to change their plans to do a funeral last minute mm -hmm. um, or things like that. And it's, it's not necessarily just a bad thing, but they do it because they care about God and they care about people. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> um, the, the majority of them, are able to do that, I guess you would say full-time as a vocation, whether it's youth ministering or um, preaching or pastoring or things like that, um, through the generosity of, of others that, you know, that, that work nine to five or are successful right. um, people that, that have more resources that are able to contribute um, those to people that um, are more able to spend the majority of their time shepherding or, mm -hmm. um, or, or caring for other people, if you will. Yeah. Um, and so that um, is, and the majority of them don't make a lot of money um, mm -hmm. as it is. Of course, there are the big names that you see in, uh, on TV and all that that, mm -hmm. that, um, that take advantage of people to um, get a whole bunch of money, but m most of them aren't that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and they're working really hard and, um, and uh, just giving of themselves and their family to, to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So, I mean, it, it's, it's sort of difficult at this point because at the halfway point, I ask a spirituality question, but we have been talking about it already. So, <laughs> so I guess we just continue then. Uh, <laughs> um, and so in, in some regards, uh, I understand it's, people have a negative view of church or church people or just uh, Christianity in general. And um, I find that it's, it's difficult to just sum it up as just one big thing to hate or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, <laughs> um, how do we sort of, uh, how do you face the, the opposition, uh, that comes from this generalized dislike of church and Christianity? Um, oh, I try to, I try to do my best to face it, like, just by getting to know those people. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, of course, the only people that you're really going to hear are the ones that scream the loudest. Um, right. And so I think a lot of the dislike of Christianity comes from, um, of course, the loud people that are that are that are maybe pushing one thing or another, um, and the rest of the kind-hearted, gentle people. You know, they they don't say that, or you know, they don't try to. They're not as vehement about one thing or another and so um i guess what what i'm trying to say is a lot of the time when i encounter somebody that that has a hostile attitude toward christianity mm -hmm. many times i just want to acknowledge that and um if the church has hurt them in some way i want to i mean the, the church is the bride of christ and mm -hmm. um and she is to be defended, but the church hurts people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I want to be able to acknowledge um, people's hurts. Right. From that. And then from there, you know, they, they can move on. But I, but like I said, it comes from being in a relationship with them and the, 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 the heartfelt objection um, thing that I mentioned earlier. Um, is understanding where they're coming from mm -hmm. and why they're coming from there. Right. Um, I have, I don't know how many friends that um, have issues with the church because of money mm -hmm. um, or that that uh, have issues with the way the church has treated their family mm -hmm. or, um, you know, um, working in or being in uh, a Bible college around people that work in the church, people there have been hurt by how the church has either, you know, maybe wrongly fired someone or, or things like that. You know, the, right. the church, the church, okay. okay. <laughs> the church does mess up. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to be able to be honest about that. Yeah. Um, but the church, also tries to look like Christ, which mm -hmm. is also a really beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in speaking with people, I try to, um, I guess, show them that, yeah, the church is, is not perfect. Um, I guess my, my biggest thing about the church is helping them understand that church is not just all about church. Mm -hmm. or the people in the church right it's about a god that is is bigger than that and is able mm -hmm. to bring them together and reconcile those relationships right and those hurts mm -hmm. um because he's beyond them yeah and and i understand that like this perspective is coming from an atheist myself so <laughs> um but that's the thing is that I, I want to acknowledge that um, that people are people. 
Mm -hmm. and uh, those relationships are still important and what what a person believes is still important and so mm -hmm. um, I, I find that the, the more that people uh, are geared towards hurting each other uh, the the worse off we'll, we all will be. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, next is like, what, how do you treat your relationship with uh, people of other faiths or no faiths? Well, I, I do my best to treat them with the same of course dignity and value that I would treat anyone right. um, from a Christian perspective everyone is is created in the image of God and has that inherent value and worth no matter what they believe mm -hmm. you know um, and of course Christianity um, takes the understanding that that God is uh, concerned with reconciling people to himself, but that doesn't mean putting anyone else down in the process. Right. Yes. You know, um, it, there, I, I kind of want to just default to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, and I mean, I want that to just be the basis for everything I say, and I like, I know a lot of times I don't do that, but of course, I mean, the love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you mm -hmm. has a an amazing effect on um, people that um, that are hateful or that um, you know are uh, opposed violently towards Christianity. Right. Right. Um, and so I, I, I guess I want to say, I want to just default to being, um, loving and, and open with people that are even violently opposed to Christianity, not right. just curious spectators, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you treat everyone lovingly and introduce them to Christ through that, not belligerence or, mm -hmm. Um, you know, violence or things like that. And amazingly, it works. The um, Christians in the first century um, were being violently opposed, and then it swallowed up the whole empire because they just were loving better than yeah. everyone else. Right. You know? uh, they were taking in, in babies off the streets and um, doing amazing things for their community, and, and it, it changed the whole empire. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, as, as they get comfortable in that and stop doing those things, then it, it, um, I guess you could say they, they, what? <laughs> You're distracting me. <laughs> um, but, um, as Christianity has uh, gotten comfortable in places over the years is when, um, I guess you could say, um, their attitudes toward other people often change. And I mean, it's, it's just part of who people are to, to want justice in the sense that if somebody wrongs you, you mm -hmm. know, you, you feel negatively towards that person. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so when when Christians behave lovingly towards curious spectators or even violent opposition, mm -hmm. um, people become more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another uh, loaded question, uh, if you will forgive me for continuing to ask them, uh, yeah. is... Uh, I mean, I want to ask, like, 
what is the importance of love, but first of all, like, how do you define love? That is a really good question. <laughs> um, in English, we only have one word for love. In mm. Greek, there are four. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, eros, which is erotic love. Um, which, by the way, American culture sometimes mistakenly accounts for all of love under that one thing, mm -hmm. um, and thus has a backwards understanding and then wonders why relationships don't work. Um, <laughs> but, um, and then there is another kind of love, which is a um, sort of brotherly mm -hmm. um, type of love, if you will, um, and then, uh, of course, there are two others. One is um, a love that says, I love you because I like something about you or I like this about you. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, when, when uh, Peter um, denies mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus asks him if he loves him. And Jesus uses a distinctly... A distinct word for love and Peter responds with yes I love you which is what we read in English but it's actually a different word mm -hmm. um, the word that Jesus uses uh, means do you love me uh, without restraint without mm -hmm. without condition mm -hmm. um, and Peter responds with yes more than that he uses a word that like I said earlier means I like you I like this thing this thing about mm -hmm. you or whatever you know um, and so Jesus is asking him one thing, and he, he responds a different way. Um, mm. And he asks him again, and then the, he kind of changes the word there. Um, but, but to get to the point, you, I mean, you can define love as we put it in English in a number of different ways. But the, um, the way biblically which God loves people is um, the unconditionally without restraint, um, mm. agape, it actually is believed to have been almost coined, I guess you could say, by some of the New Testament writers. The word mm. didn't really exist very much mm. around then, so they kind of had to to come up with a word for the way in which God loves people, which right. I think is kind of cool. Yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> but um, in, in society today, we, we tend to approach people first from the standpoint okay what do i have in common with these people what are what is this thing about this person that i like mm -hmm. which we kind of take as the basis for starting a relationship with someone mm -hmm. um and then if, if it goes further to be a romantic relationship um you move to eros or even some people take it the other way around you know they start there and then they move to things like that. And then maybe eventually they can have that unconditional sort of thing. But mm -hmm. most of the time they just never even get there, mm -hmm. which is why the majority of marriages uh, in the country fall apart is mm -hmm. because there's a misunderstanding about what love actually mm -hmm. is. And then when the butterflies go away, right. we don't know what to do with that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess I would say that the, the best way to define love um, in a word would be the Greek word agape, which is that unconditional, mm -hmm. without restraint, um, more, I guess, theophilosophically, if you will. <laughs> I would say it's an attribute of God, which is a, it's like saying a characteristic, but it's not something that defines God, mm -hmm. because God can't be defined. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I realize this is like it, it seems like it's 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 playing in circles, but um, it is in the nature of God. And I don't want to say that to denote that God has parts because that's partialism. <laughs> but um, love is an attribute of the nature of God. It comes from who he is. Mm. Yeah. And then how do, uh, yes, now there are dog eating sounds, uh, not sounds of people eating dogs, but a dog eating food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how do 
people love? Uh, and, then, and then how do people love like God, if that is even possible? <laughs> well, um, I guess people love in a somewhat intangible sense. And then they express that love through a variety of different means. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly enough, most people are receptive to certain ways uh, of both expressing that love and receiving that love. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if you've heard of like the five love languages yeah, yeah. or whatever, but like there's there's words of affirmation um, that some people are just naturally good at telling people things that they, you know, they appreciate about them or uh, expressing their love through words. I'm not really one of those people. Um, <laughs> acts of service is another one. Um, I can do that. I'll spend time on things for people. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the other ones I'm not very good at. Uh, quality time is like some people just like to express their love for people by being around them and with them. Mm -hmm. um, gifts. Some people are really good gift givers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not <laughs> really... Uh, I'm not that good either. I always give very practical gifts. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's a thing that you needed. <laughs> um, but, and that's a really good example because, you know, if you have an anniversary with a girlfriend or a significant other or whatever, you don't get her a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a reason that people get each other roses because it, it says something that's beyond words, and while it may be infinitely more practical to have a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> especially when you need one, mm. um, that expresses your affection in a way that they understand through symbols um, that that something else just wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess you could say people love intangibly but express that in tangible ways mm -hmm. and the, the kind of love of course can vary but, mm -hmm. um, is there a fifth that we haven't touched service. on uh, yeah um, <laughs> uh, touch some people are huggers and, and stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, and most people as they go throughout their life change they go mm -hmm. they tend to gravitate towards one and then in another part of their life they shift to a different mm -hmm. couple of them but. yeah yeah um and then how can we love like god well of course it's um like I was saying, it's, it's a very unconditional, selfless um, love, but I think the more time you spend around someone, or the more time you spend with someone, the more you start to love the things and appreciate the things that they love and appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, getting to know God as bad of an answer as I had for that earlier um, is one way in which you can learn to love like him mm -hmm. and learn to love the people that he loves right. uh, to develop a heart for um, you know people that culture tells you are worthless or um, they tell you themselves that they don't like you with violent force <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah um, and so I mean, of course, spending more time with him is a great way to do that. But also getting to know the people that it's hard for you to love mm -hmm. is a great way to do that. Yeah. And having conversations with them and developing relationships with them so you can love them well and not shout things at them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Generally, relationships are not improved with shouting. No, generally not. <laughs>
<laughs> I was trying to was trying to a, think of a situation in think which of a situation. shouting might help. Yeah, but it doesn't. Maybe band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe in which like they need to be shouted at in order to keep them safe. Look out! Yeah. Uh, that's that's yeah, a decent way a to one. show love by shouting. By shouting. <laughs> One of my five world languages is shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Show affection through uh, high volume. Um, uh, lastly, um, what advice do you have for people? Just in general? Yeah, or, you know, with whatever context you want to involve. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be giving advice. <laughs> Could have had people write in their own questions. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! <clears throat> I probably should try to narrow it down uh, because if I don't, it'll be so vague that it won't be helpful to anybody. <laughs> um, and so. What I guess I would say to Christians, because um, I like I get the struggle, um, have a view of God that's bigger than yourself, and so that frees you to live bigger than yourself, but also get to know people that don't agree with you, and then introduce them to Jesus. Yeah. Because people have a hard time with, um, and I've had a hard time with trying to know enough about mm -hmm. Jesus. But, I mean, you, if you just know somebody, you can introduce them. Right. Um, and so, and that also helps you to love people that he loves. Um, whether that's, I mean, you know, society may say that special needs people aren't loved or um, or all sorts of, I know that's not going to be on TV, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're not, people portray other people as not valuable. Right. Um, and so that's how you learn to love those people, um, is by getting to know him. And then, um, for non-Christians, um, I realize a lot of objections are intellectual in nature. And I realize that a lot of them are, uh, non-intellectual in nature as in like emotional or, or mm -hmm. things like that and that, that sounds really weird coming from uh, a Christian person I know it sounds cheesy um, <laughs> I guess what I would say is, is get to know really well some Christians um, and this this goes for both sides. This is mm -hmm. this is for Christians. Christians get to know some non Christians, and non Christians get to know some Christians, so that you can develop a relationship, and actually have meaningful discussion and an effect on each other's lives, rather than staying stagnant, right? Um, and and just not growing because mm -hmm. uh, we shut other people out because they don't look or sound like what we want them to. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that a lot. John, thank you for doing this with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how can people support you or the things that you want supported or shout outs or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Big Jet now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I uh, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself a pool from Hydro Pools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't work there anymore, but... Uh... <laughs> if you are in need of a pool, I guess you can support his family. <laughs> yeah. I don't... I don't... Yeah. I, I don't really like money or... <laughs> <laughs> so um, I mean I, I guess if you want to pray I'm not going to stop you but I will <laughs> <laughs> I started foiled again 
Um, prayer is always good, um, just in general. I don't really have anything specific. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm just here. And if, I don't know, I guess if it was a meaningful conversation or there was any meaningful interaction that went on and you have questions or things like that. Um, yeah, it's like, contact me and I will contact John through that way, I guess, if you want. Yeah, or if they just want to contact me or well, I don't care. Um, <laughs> however it works out. Um, uh, yeah, so I've kind of been on the inside of the church stuff and I'm... You, you won't ask me a question that I'm afraid of because I have had all sorts of crazy, weird things happen. And it's, uh, I'm not really like surprised <laughs> by, <laughs> by much of anything anymore. Right. So, um, and if I can be of help, I'll try to give you an answer, but I don't know most of them. <laughs> but, and have, that's okay. Uh, yeah, but I have the resources to find some of them out. So, cool. No, and I think it's very important for people to admit whenever they don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah. Um, that that will go a long way in your life. <laughs> There's more advice. You can say, I don't know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, letting me into your home and uh, having me ask you very difficult questions. Anytime. Uh, I'm Santiago Ramones. And I'm John Barrett. Uh, you can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I make music. That is also where you will find this podcast. There is music uh, that you will find links to that you can pay money for or not pay money for. Um, and that's also fine. <laughs> uh, also featuring in this podcast is uh, Riker. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Um, but, yeah, you can find all my things on my website. Um, I always end every podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. <laughs>